to the women's war week by week. Now, I wonder if you remember me telling you about Dr. Elsie Ingalls. Last time we spoke about her, she was incandescent about being told to go home and sit still. Well, I can assure you that was one thing she hadn't been doing. She had been busy doing what we would now see as networking, and she and the Scottish Federation of Women's Suffrage Societies had soon formulated a plan. This plan did lead to Elsie sitting, temporarily, but not still, at her writing desk, sending letters to those who might be interested in what she had to offer. On the 15th of October 1914, she wrote a letter to the French ambassador in London. A very proper, if perhaps slightly modest letter. Let me read it to you. I am directed by the executive of the Scottish Federation of Women's Suffrage Societies to ask Your Excellency's consideration of our scheme for organising medical aid for the help of our allies in the field. Then came the lines that His Excellency must have jumped at. The Federation proposes to send out hospital units officered by women doctors and staffed by fully trained nurses and properly qualified dressers. The unit will send out 100 fully equipped beds. Should Your Excellency's Government desire such aid as we are proud to offer, it will be very willingly placed at the service of the French Red Cross. Our units will be prepared to move from place to place as the exigencies of war may require and to utilise such buildings as may be placed at our disposal. Elsie and the Federation had also decided to make a similar offer to the Serbs. Perhaps not surprisingly, both ambassadors accepted on behalf of their governments. They knew that their medical services were woefully inadequate. Those in Serbia may even have compared unfavourably to those of the Napoleonic era. Suffrage societies in England also rallied behind their Scottish counterparts and the newly named Scottish Women's Hospital for Foreign Service. Having calculated that £1,000 would equip a 100-bed hospital, committees and subcommittees were formed. These dealt with cars, hospitals, personnel, equipment and the all-important uniform. The latter was always a thorny question for women during the war. Money began flowing in and by October the 30th, the Common Cause, the National Union of Women's Suffrage Society's paper, triumphantly declared, Dr Ingalls has got her first £1,000. By the way, that is about £100,000 in today's money. One hospital is secure, the paper said, and will go to Serbia. Little did the Serbs know what a magnificent unit would soon be on its way to assist them. By the following week, the amount raised had increased to £2,800 and still the cash flowed in. Elsie and the committee were thinking big now. Maybe they could manage not two, but three hospitals. Come back soon to hear the next instalment in the Scottish Women's Hospital story. We will talk about it as we go through the Women's War, week by week.